That ball looked like it was shot out of a cannon. Change in lane for a Cougar touchdown. You're in for a barn burn of a second half. Shamar Her gonna walk it into the end zone. Yeah, that move. Whoa. Yeah, that was a fantastic play. Looking for the home run ball. Looking to go deep and connect for the touchdown. Strap in your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen. Hang on. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the 2023 Chippewa Valley Cable Television Football Preview Show. I'll be your host, Brad Fetters. Today, we will meet the coaches and captains of our two district teams, the Chippewa Valley Big Reds and the Dakota Cougars, as they get ready for what should be another outstanding football season. Before we get started, we need to take a look back at last year's Macomb Area Conference Red Standings. Dakota captured the MAC Red title with a perfect 5-0 record in league play. The Cougars dominated play throughout the regular season, winning their league games by nearly 19 points per game. The Dakota defense was stifling all season long, giving up just 9 points per contest. Chippewa Valley, Romeo, and Eisenhower all finished with identical 3-2 records in league play. That was good enough for a tie for second place. Anchor Bay went 1-4 in their first year back in the MAC Red, while the Stevenson Titans finished at the bottom of the league standings with a winless 0-5 mark. Four of the six MAC Red teams qualified for the postseason, with Dakota advancing all the way to the regional finals. There will be no changes to this year's MAC alignment, as it is year two of the biannual agreement. We kick things off now with the Chippewa Valley Big Reds. Last year's team went 7-3 overall with a heartbreaking first-round playoff exit at the hands of Mac Red rival Romeo. Quarterback Andrew Schuster is back for his senior season and recently committed to Grand Valley State University. Many skilled position players are back this season for head coach Scott Merchant, who is in his 15th season at the helm of Chippewa Valley football. We recently caught up with coach and his captains to look back at last season and look ahead to this year's campaign. Coach, just kind of give me your overall thoughts on last year. Yeah, it was a good year. Had a good team, good group of seniors. Just lost three really close, tough games. You know, and that's kind of been our MO the last two or three years. I mean, we had a lot of good highs. We played, we played good. We lost close games, but we didn't get over that hump we needed to last year. I feel like as far as like a regular season, you know, we did good. Last year was a good season overall as a team. We didn't end up where we wanted to be at. Lost in the first round to Romeo. Hard fought game. We were winning in the fourth quarter against Dakota, and then they ended up closing us out, coming from behind and winning. When you play in the Mac Red, you have a lot of close games, and you got to find a way to, to win those tight ones. We lost a few close games that I think we could have won, um, especially playoff game. I thought we had that. I felt like we played really, really well in our playoff game against Romeo. Our kids improved tremendously from the first time. Yeah, the margin for error is just really small in our conference and in Division One. If we want to be great, you got to find a way to win those games. We were close, but you always want more. If we would have fought a little bit harder, it would have been a little different, but on to the new season. We had a tight bond with our team this year, and we're coming to prove what we didn't prove last year. Full expectations, obviously win the MAC Red and then go far in the playoffs. Our number one goal is we want to try to be better than last year. We lost Romeo twice, lost to Dakota. So obviously we got to beat our rival this year. As always, beat our rivals, win conference, make it to the state championship. If we're frank about it, you know, we haven't won the MAC Red since 2019 and we haven't been out of our district since 2018. We want to compete for the MAC Red championship, uh, obviously make the playoffs and we want to get out of districts and make a run. First, we got West Bloomfield, top team in the state. Got to make it past them first. But then, you know, we have more immediate goals. Like, you know, we want to be more physical. And we want to be a closer team. Build around our our front five and front four. 
just things that are unique to this team as well. We got to finish close games, and I think that starts in the weight room and out here in practice, and I think we've been doing that. I feel like if we get LA right, we're going to be a great team. We got a big, big shoes to fill, and I think we're going to fill those shoes this year. We've talked about it in the past, Mac Red, arguably the toughest division in high school football in the state of Michigan. You know, I mean, Dakota has a great program and they're the reigning champs. Romeo, same thing. I mean, they won it two years ago, I think. You know, both those teams beat us last year, so, you know, those are goals of ours to beat those two teams. I think Eisenhower is going to be improved this year. I think they were pretty young last year. I think Stevenson was super young last year, and, and they're going to be improved. I think Mike Giannone is doing a great job at Anchor Bay. They were in every game, and they lost some heartbreakers and really easily could have been 5-4, and four, maybe 6-3. and three. So you just don't know how it's going to shake out. I know it's going to be tough, and I know it's going to be close. Everybody will see each other again in the playoffs anyways. So even if you feel good about winning the league, you know you're going to have to play teams two more times that you've already played. That makes the playoffs that much harder because you know you're going to have to play great competition against great teams, great coaches, and, and you know each other really well, so you're not going to trick each other. There's no, there's no secrets. It makes for you know, super tight games. What's one game on this year's schedule you're most looking forward to playing in and why? West Bloomfield, because everybody counting us out. They think we don't got the talent, we don't got the toughness for us to do it. But I feel like I could put all our players up against theirs no matter what. And I'll probably everybody on my team will step behind me behind that. We just got to shock the world August 24th. I'm really looking forward to that first game. West Bloomfield, week one, prime time, Wayne State. That doesn't get better than that. You know, playing a great team, top 10 team in the state. Dakota, it's a rivalry game, and I feel like this year is our year, and we're going we gonna to bring it to them, and it's here at Chippewa Valley. Ooh, I, I don't know if I can name just one. I got probably three. Uh, West Bloomfield, of course, Dakota, and Romeo. My favorite three. Can't wait. So we have three captains right now. Andrew Schuster had a great year at quarterback for us. He's committed to Grand Valley right now. He's a great leader. Probably the most vocal of the three. Hard worker, great player, smart, studies. He puts in all the extra time. Great student, athlete. Ray Sean Hester, who is uh, committed to Eastern Michigan. Battled injuries all last year. He's finally healthy, so we're really excited about that. Ray's kind of like the consummate professional, you know, the guy who's just always working on his craft, always trying to get better, always thinking about football, always talking about football. Cash Shaw is uh, taking his brother's spot this year. Was our second leading tackler as a safety last year and a good running back. Good leader, hard worker, leads by action and by word. Oh man, I've been playing with Merchis this freshman year. He's a great coach. Him and Den Ryder do a great job with the play calling. They help us really get the job done, help us put us in the right position to execute the plays. He brings a lot to the table. Um, obviously he's a great coach, one of the best in the state. He brings good culture to the program and uh, you know you're getting better every day with him. He pushes us to the best we can be every day. He doesn't accept nothing short than what you can be. He wants us to be better men. He, he wants us to be better after high school. When outsiders talk about Chippewa Valley football, what do you hope they say? I hope they say our kids played hard, they played clean, they were well coached, they were disciplined, and they're physical. Those guys wanted it, and they were hungry. And they just tough. They, were, they played as a team. Grit, our toughness. That's what we want to do. We want to assert our dominance. You don't have to win games to be proud of your kids. As long as we get better and we are the best team that we can be, whatever that looks like, the playoff game, I couldn't have been more proud of them. They did everything we asked them to do, and sometimes it just doesn't go your way. That's life, you know, and that's something you got to learn how to deal with. Hopefully our guys are going to use that as uh, motivation, realize that attention to detail and those little things and how close of a team we are, how much we care about each other, those might make the difference in those close games. This year's team, we have a tight bond with our team. We're really close, and... Uh, we're looking to prove what we didn't prove last year, and it should be a great year. Six of the nine regular season games will be played off campus for the Big Reds, including week one as they take on the 2020 state champions, the Lakers of West Bloomfield, on the campus of Wayne State University. Three straight road games, including back-to-back -back Mac Red contests, loom for Chippewa Valley as they visit Lance Cruz, Eisenhower, 
and Anchor Bay in weeks two, three, and four. The Big Reds finally play at home on September 22nd as they welcome in their rivals, the Dakota Cougars. That game can be seen right here on Chippewa Valley Cable Television with Jeff Vitale and myself on the call. The month of September ends with yet another road game as Chippewa Valley will travel to Sterling Heights to take on the Stevenson Titans. The Mac Red schedule wraps up on October 6th as the Romeo Bulldogs will come into the Valley. The Big Reds will look for some revenge as they drop both games last season to Romeo, including a first round playoff game. We will have the broadcast of that game in its entirety. For the second straight year, the Warmont Marauders will be the Mac White crossover opponent in week eight, with that game taking place at Warmont on October 13th. The regular season will wrap up October 20th, senior night, as our Big Reds play host to the Bear Creek Kodiaks of Ontario, Canada. A few opportunities this season to see your Big Reds right here on Chippewa Valley Cable Television, including that Week 9 International Contest with Bear Creek. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can receive notification of when the games will be available to you, along with the rest of our sports programming. The Big Reds will look to get over the hump this year after back-to-back -back seven win seasons. They'll also try and extend their playoff streak to 12 straight years. We wish Chippewa Valley good luck this year. Next up on our football preview show is the Dakota Cougars. A perfect 9-0 record in the regular season was the first time the Cougars accomplished that feat since 2013. It was also the first outright league title for Dakota since 2015. The Cougars picked up a second straight district championship with back-to-back -back shutout victories in the playoffs over the Mac Red foes Eisenhower and Romeo. They eventually fell to Cass Tech in the regional finals 35-21. Dakota will be replacing quite a bit of their roster from last season, especially their offense after the graduations of quarterback Ethan Hamby and leading rusher Joe Kasevic. Hamby will be playing football for Northwood University this season and Kasevic is on the roster at Concordia University in Ann Arbor. We had the opportunity to interview head coach Greg Bauer and his captains. Here's what they had to say as they prepare for yet another tough season in the Mac Red. Okay, Coach, uh, take me back to the last season first. Uh, just kind of give me your overall thoughts on last year. Well, it was a great season, 11-1, uh, and one, Mac Red champions, district champions. One of the better seasons we've had in a long time, but uh, we still would have liked to finish it a little bit better. Uh, we let one get away there against Cass Tech, but uh, that one's over, and we got a new one to tackle this year. I enjoyed that team very much. That was a great season, you know. Didn't end how we wanted it to, but won the Mac Red and everything, so I think it went well. Last year, we had a really great group of guys out there. Great team chemistry. Everyone loved being out there and a pretty successful season all the way. Everyone kind of did their job, watched their film, went to work every day, wanted to be there, played together well, and came up a little short in the end, but all around a great season and I don't regret any of it. I can't really think of any lows besides the loss of Cast Tech. I mean, we got I feel like we got in our own heads and it was mental. I feel like we should have won. We had a really good team. I feel like our, all our guys had really great chemistry and we all played really, really well together. I feel like we have a lot of that this year too as well, a lot of good team chemistry. We're just worried about game one right now. We're a little bit younger this year, so we have some things we got to work on, but we're getting there. I really feel like we're going into week one confident. We work really, really hard, you know, in and out of the weight room, in and out of practice, always pushing each other to our limits. The expectations here are always the same. We want to win the MAC Red, and then we want to try to, to go further than we did the year before. Last year we were in the district finals, we went to the regional finals, and then we, we came up short, so we're trying to kick that door down in the regional final. Expectations are always high every year. we got a playoff streak going. All the underclassmen, they all have a standard that they need to live up to. There's no drop-off expected at any year. We want to go undefeated, obviously. At Dakota, we want to win state championships, so that's the goal. We, we didn't get that last year. Anything that isn't the state championship is always disappointing, but we come here to work, and we're going to put in that work and try to win every game we can. We know teams are going to come at us and get us this year after we went undefeated, so we know we got to repeat and do it again. There's not a week in the MAC Red where any team can't beat the other team. Chippewa Valley is going to be very, very good. Eisenhower is going to be excellent. Romeo is going to be excellent. I think we're going to be pretty good. Um, and Stevenson is going to be better. Anchor Bay is going to be better. So it, it's, it's a week-to-week -week thing, and you better have focus, and you better have discipline and be ready. 
What's that one game on this year's schedule you're most looking forward to playing in the morning? Romeo. Uh, it's a great rivalry. I have a bunch of buddies over there, always, you know, head to head, who, who we think is going to beat each other. Romeo, home on homecoming. Big rivalry game, always an intense game. You know, we were pretty successful over the last few years with them, but we play them on homecoming this year, so it's going to be a really big game, and I'm, I'm excited for it. Probably the chip game, just because they're a crosstown rival. Can't go wrong with that. Probably Chippewa Valley Week, because, you know, that's our biggest rival, and uh, we get to go there this year, and to be able to go there and beat them is what I want to do. What do you think might be the, one of the strengths of this year's team? I think our offensive and defensive lines are going to be very good. Um, our, our skill positions are going to be good. It might take a little bit because uh, some of them are, are young, but uh, our junior class of players have never lost a football game. So that's that's a good starting point. As soon as they get up to speed and mature, I think uh, we're going to be pretty good. Jake Kowalkowski, he's a two-year starter for us. Played a lot last year at defensive end. Jake's a very good leader. Uh, he's more by example. C.J. Russell is a kid who's vying for a starting spot. Uh, excellent leader. He's more vocal than the rest. You'll hear him out here a lot. Um, really, really good kid. And then we have Bryce Ward, starting offensive tackle for us last year. Uh, really done a, a nice job this offseason with his leadership. Austin Chachowski is probably our best football player. Probably the guy that you want to model your program around. Works his tail off at everything he does. He's just a really, really good kid and a very good football player. He represents exactly what we want here at Dakota. I think Coach is like a defensive genius out there. Uh, he installs discipline into us that not only makes us great football players, but also makes us great young men growing up. Every week we spend at least half hour, 45 minutes going over what that other team is going to run. And I feel like he watches the film and does all the work and gives us what we need to succeed on the field. The defense, man, he's a, he's a genius. He's always, always coaching us up. He studies and studies film, makes sure we all study film and making sure we know our jobs and we know our assignments and we're always doing it well. We are you know, very committed to excellence. People here, they, they expect us to be good. So we expect that out of ourselves. Our coaches expect that out of each other. We don't want to let each other down. We don't want to let anybody else in the community down. But it's just kind of that collective expectation of excellence, which is great. It's like the, a collective effort here, and, and it's, it's special here. It really is, because last year we were 11 and 1, and it wasn't good enough. You know what I mean? So a lot of places, that doesn't happen. Great program. It's great to be around. It's fun. It's fun to be here. It makes me want to come out here every day and just get better. What I've heard from other people is everyone wants to beat us because we're Dakota. It's always a big game for other people, so we have to bring it to the table every game because we got to live up to that expectation. I think Dakota should be looked at as one of the best out there, and just in all aspects. A great team that works hard, great players, you know, great sportsmanship. Everyone should want to beat Dakota because Dakota is that team. The Dakota Cougars will start their 2023 season on Chippewa Valley Cable Television with a game August 24th at home against the Dearborn Forts and Tractors. It will be the fourth all-time meeting between the schools and the first since 2013 when the Cougars beat Forts in 17-9. Dakota will go on the road in Week 2 to take on the Utica Chieftains before returning home to kick off Mac Red League play on September 8th against the Tires of Anchor Bay. It will then be back-to-back -back road tilts with Stevenson and Chippewa Valley before ending the month of September with the annual homecoming game against the Romeo Bulldogs. The Cougars will travel to Eisenhower on October 6th to take on the Eagles before wrapping up their home schedule the game against the Henry Ford Falcons on October 13th. Our Cougars will finish up the regular season on the road for a matchup on the red turf of Orchard Lake St. Mary's. It'll be the fifth all-time matchup between the schools, the Cougars having won three of the previous four games. All four Dakota home games will be broadcast right here on Chippewa Valley Cable Television, as well as the road game against their rivals, the Big Reds, on September 22nd. The Cougars will look to make it 23 straight years of playoff appearances 
as they continue to be one of these state's perennial powers. That will wrap it up for this year's football preview show. I'd like to thank both head coaches for taking time out of their busy preseason schedules to meet with us. A big thank you as well to the athletic departments at Chippewa Valley and Dakota. Plenty of good football will be played all season long right here on Chippewa Valley Cable Television. Jeff Vitale and myself will be together again in the broadcast booth to describe the action nearly every single Friday night this fall. Until then, thanks for watching.